Hey everyone, Chalmix here with some words of wisdom. If at first you don't succeed, try again is probably one of the most well-known adages out there. And it's probably something a lot of you guys can relate to. It applies to almost anything in life that requires even a little bit of skill. There are some things that many people aren't expected to be able to do on their first try. Especially if it's something new or never done before. But that's okay. Many mistakes are followed by feedback and even helpful suggestions on how to improve. Mistakes are amazing learning opportunities and essential ingredients to perfecting something. Imagine if Michael Jordan gave up after his first failed attempt at a three-pointer. Or Leonardo DiCaprio called it a day after messing up a line while rehearsing. I would like to <laughs> This world would be filled with a lot less talented people if that were the case. This applies to video games as well. Imagine if The Witcher game stopped after the first entry. CD Projekt Red was basically an indie game studio at the time, and the original Witcher game had pretty bad voice acting and graphics. The swamps widen deep with mosquitoes up your arse. Oh, they've been stinging lately. And the gameplay was a bit up in the air. If CDPR gave up after the first game, we never would have gotten The Witcher 3, possibly one of the greatest RPGs of all time. One thing Sonic Team loves to do is exactly this. They'll come up with some interesting new gameplay style that strays a bit from the usual formula, and then never elaborate on it in future games. This is Sonic Team's cowardly one-and-done strategy. Imagine if Sonic Team took the feedback and criticism from these games and made an improved sequel. There are a handful of Sonic games that come to mind that would really benefit from sequels. Let's dive into a few of them and brainstorm some ideas. Sonic R came out for the Sega Saturn back in 1997. With so many characters focused on going fast, a spin-off racing game seemed like a super obvious choice, right? Well, it actually wasn't the first racing game in the Sonic franchise, but it was the first racing game that had characters move around on foot without the use of vehicles. 1994's Sonic Drift had characters race around in cars, and you could possibly view the more recent Sonic All-Stars racing series to be the successor to this game. But what about Sonic R? After its release, it never got any kind of sequel or even anything similar. Pretty much any racing game to come out after had characters in some kind of vehicle or on a hoverboard. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy these other racing games, but it always just seems strange to me that there were never any other racing games to have our iconic speedy characters run around on foot. Saying Sonic R is a game with mixed reviews is being generous. Most people dislike this game, but I always found it extremely charming. The music alone is almost reason enough to play through it. I'd go as far as to say it's actually some of the best in the entire series. It's really the hard to control characters and lack of content that makes this game so disliked. Characters feel like they're running on ice while constantly bumper carting into walls, and the turn speeds are painfully slow. There is only a grand total of 5 levels, making this a game most can complete in under an hour. But I believe these are all things that can be fixed with a sequel. A Sonic R sequel could be amazing if the controls were improved and there were more levels. On top of this, there are so many unique Sonic characters nowadays to include in the playable roster. And it'd be easy to make them all have interesting abilities so Sonic isn't the only viable character like in the original game. An online mode would also be another no-brainer. There could be leaderboards, a level progression system, and a bunch of other modern mechanics and modes that add to the replayability. But I think the most important thing that would possibly be a maker break for the entire game would be to get the original singer back to do more songs. Sonic R just wouldn't be the same without these iconic vocal tracks. Sonic Heroes is an awesome game, but I'd be lying if I said there weren't a few flaws that made it a little bit less of an enjoyable experience. Characters go from 0 to 100 in less than a second and also have overly sensitive controls at top speeds. On top of this, top speeds are extremely high and movement is a bit slippery. I also have a few complaints about the homing attack being very airy. There's a lot of instances of hits just not registering. But overall, this game is pretty well reviewed and it's a very solid experience that 
that still holds up today. The reason this game is on my list is because of the untapped potential of the team mechanic that I just feel hasn't been realized yet. Of course, tightening up the controls in a sequel is expected and would be an awesome improvement, and adding more replay value with other game modes would be great as well. But one thing I always thought should have been utilized more was the unique abilities of each character. I just feel like they can take it a step further with fully utilizing all three characters' abilities. Also, with the ease of access to online play, I think it would be cool if you can play with friends to control each character. Sonic Battle released on the Game Boy Advance around the same time as Sonic Heroes. It's a beat-em-up styled game with a pretty in-depth story, especially for a handheld Sonic spin-off. The gameplay is pretty fun, but the main issue is that it gets insanely repetitive as you keep playing. It was also very limited to the Game Boy Advance's hardware, so seeing a newer game on modern consoles would be a huge upgrade in itself. If this game were to get a sequel, I'd love to see a more in-depth combat system utilizing the extra buttons on a console controller. I'd also love to see more playable characters. Give me some deep fighting game mechanics like cancels and meters, and I'm sold. I also think a co-op mode would be pretty cool too. And finally, I'd love to see the awesome art style from Sonic Battle to make a return. I always love the extremely messy and angular look, and I'm surprised it was never used for anything outside of this game. This art style definitely gives Sonic Battle its own unique feel. Shadow the Hedgehog. It's got guns, motorcycles, babes, and any other cool thing you can think of. I talked about this game and many of its flaws in my previous video, and apparently it struck a chord with some people. But yeah, check out my 6 Sonic games worse than Sonic 06 video for some context. I think the concept of a third person shooter platformer is pretty cool. Just look at Ratchet and Clank. These games wouldn't be so well reviewed if this gameplay style didn't work. But in comparison, I think Shadow the Hedgehog falls pretty flat in a lot of categories. I honestly believe that with some proper adjustments, a continuation to this spin-off series could thrive. First, I think streamlining the story progression a bit would be super beneficial. The original game has over 10 endings, making you replay the game from the beginning each time to unlock a new one. And obviously, they could tighten the controls and make each attack feel a bit snappier. Also, having better objectives per level would be important, as the ones in the original are extremely tedious, having you do a lot of backtracking. Finally, I think they need to be a bit more careful with Shadow's character. He really isn't supposed to be this extremely edgy bad guy, and I'd love to see more of Shadow's story while not going overboard with the tone of the game. Sonic Lost World is another game I talked about in my previous video. I think the concept is interesting, but the execution is pretty weak. Overall, it's a lot slower paced of a game compared to most other Sonic titles, and its aesthetic is extremely uninspired. The parkour system is an interesting idea, but I don't think it was really utilized to its full extent. I think a sequel to Lost World could fix all these issues. Faster controls, more varied level design, a more original aesthetic, and an expanded parkour system would be really awesome and would answer many of my complaints I had with the game. I feel like since the original was a Wii U exclusive, they possibly had to lower the target age demographic, making this story a lot more kid-friendly. Ultimately, it really hurt the entire tone of the game and made it really unengaging. If a sequel were to be released outside of Nintendo consoles, I think they'd have more freedom to write something even just a bit more mature, which would help tremendously. Sonic is a very large franchise, and with the endless amount of games, there's bound to be some hit or miss gameplay ideas. But what's really disappointing is when something with so much potential gets stopped after its first attempt. Sonic Team's cowardly one and done strategy is robbing a lot of these games of a second chance. There are so many games in the series that have a ton of potential, but are stunted at the infant stage, never really having the chance to iron out its wrinkles or flesh itself out. It would be really awesome to possibly revisit some of these games with a sequel, because I think they'd be able to take the feedback from the previous games and build it on top of what already worked. 
but compared to the 90s and early 2000s, we just don't get as many Sonic spin-off games as we used to. I don't expect Sonic Team to go back to many or even any of these games anytime soon, as they seem to be focused on getting the mainline series back on track yet again. But hopefully after they figure that out, they can find some time to go back to these unique games that deserve a second chance. Hey, thank you guys for watching. If you liked what you saw, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content similar to this. I try to upload at least one video per week. In the comments, let me know your number one Sonic game you would love to see a sequel to. If you'd like to hang out and watch me play some games, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And finally, if you're a super fan of my content and want some of the behind the scenes action, make sure to join our community Discord, link in the description. And as always, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Peace.